Hello, and welcome to Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Morgan from Education. In the studio with us today, we have my friend Olivia. We are going to be playing a game called I Spy today. So, what I would like you to do, please, if you are watching us live, is to go ahead and text us with some questions, any comments that you have. Uh, just go ahead and shout out your answers. Uh, the number to text us live questions is 562-286-1838, right there on your screen. If you are joining us after this live airing, you can go ahead and email us some questions to live at lbaop.org. All right. So we are here in Blue Cavern right now. We have some giant sea bass saying hello, saying good morning. Ooh, that is what I spy this morning. All right, so I mentioned we are going to be playing a game called I Spy. But before we start that game, let's go over how scientists make observations. So, observations, do you know this word? It's a big word. Observations just means take, using your senses to gather information about the world. So there are five senses five main senses that you have. Do you know those senses? Well, if you don't, I'm going to go over here, step over to my whiteboard and explain. So, observation. That is a big word. O-B-S-E-R-V-A-T-I-O-N. Observation. So, Gathering data from your senses. So we have five senses. The first one we'll start off with is your eyes. So what do you do with your eyes? You look. So look, looking is really important. A lot of observations are made just by looking at something for a long time. You can also listen. You can use your ears to listen. So you can gather a lot of information about animals by listening to their sounds. We're going to do a little bit of that today. You can also smell with your nose. There's a nose. <laughs> You can also taste with your mouth or your tongue. We're not going to be doing any tasting today, but that is an important sense that you have. And then fifth and finally, we have touch. One of my favorite things to do here at the aquarium is actually touch some of the animals that we have. But since we are online, we are going to be focusing on looking and listening. All right. So let's play our first practice round. Remember, we're going to be making observations. Ooh, Olivia has brought us to our penguins exhibit. So remember, we're observing using our eyes and also our ears right? Listening. So what do you see here? What, do you, what can you see? Well, take a minute. Go ahead and text your observations. What do you see? 252-286-1838. What do you see? Well, I spy, with my little eye, some penguins. And how do I know that these are penguins? Well, when I look at them, I see that they are black and white, typical penguin colors. I see that they have little tiny stubby webbed feet and they kind of walk like this. They do the little penguin waddle. Uh, the one in the back was just doing that. I also noticed, oh, there's one right right there. 
<laughs> that is, looks like it was grooming itself for a second there. It's kind of laying down. Their body shape is almost like a, a big football, right? A football shape. They also have their wings. Right? Their wings are almost like little football shapes too. Ooh, here's a great picture of a penguin. This is a Magellanic penguin. Those are the penguins that we have here at the aquarium. So something that I can observe about this penguin is that it has a really cool coloration. It has like a little white circle around its eye. It starts at its beak and it kind of goes down by its chin there. That is so cool. Also, I noticed this penguin has an eye, just like you and me. We have eyes, penguins have eyes too. They use their eyes to see. It also has a beak. It has like a kind of a, see right up here, has sort of a rounded curved beak right there. I wonder what that beak would be used for. Hmm. Yeah, eating, right? That's, they're going to eat their food with their beak. Now penguins are birds, of course, but unlike, oh, this is a great picture. Unlike most birds, penguins do not fly. There are other lightless birds uh, you may know of also, maybe perhaps like the ostrich. But these penguins are going to be swimming. So they use their wings to help them swim in the water. So their body shape, that like football shaped body, plus their wings are gonna help them move speedily through the water. And so they're going to be catching fish, that's their prey, the things that they eat in the water with those beaks. Now, a fun fact about penguins is that when they eat their prey, they're also taking in a bunch of seawater. And seawater, ocean water, it's pretty salty, right? I don't know if you've ever been to the beach and tasted the water by accident, but it's, it's pretty salty. So if we had all that salt in our body, we would get sick, and so would penguins. But penguins have this really cool thing called a gland that actually gets rid of all the extra salt that they take in when they're trying to eat their prey. So that is a fun fact about these swimming birds. What else can you spy with your little eye about these penguins? Hmm. Well, I see that they actually have a really cool stripe, a black stripe on their body, right? Sort of along their chest. So let's go ahead and draw a penguin together. Let's draw a Magellanic penguin. So I'm gonna go over here, see my whiteboard again. And you can actually draw along with me. If you're at home, if you have a piece of paper, all you need is a pen or pencil and paper, or you can just watch, you can observe. All right, so we're going to start off with the head. So we use a circle for their head, right? They're sort of circular. Then for their body, we're going to use a kind of a half oval here. Yeah, so that's their body. Then we got to draw in their little web feet. So for their web feet, we're going to use a little bit of a rectangle with some triangles, right? Webbed feet are going to help them actually swim in the water. Something else that will help them. And of course, just like us, they have two feet. And then they also have a beak, right? We explained that beak earlier. So we can draw two triangles for their beak. Like this. Yeah. Then we think about their wings. Their wings we can draw as like little footballs. Right, there's one. There's another. What else do we need? We need some tail feathers. Let's draw a triangle for tail feathers. All right, now that's pretty much its body. Let's go ahead and fill in its eye. All right, so its eye is sort of like our eyes. Then with the Magellan, Magellanic penguins, we have kind of a circle, black circle around its eye. Then it has another 
sort of a half circle stripe of white and then we have sort of the back of its head is colored black color that in there then it has black wings and a black tail feather and then black web feet here all right so it also has that stripe so let's do that again sort of a half oval here or like a line curved line and then this would be black as well And then we have that little stripe, that stripe of white. And this is kind of a black color here too, around its eye. There we have it, our Magellanic penguin. So penguin is spelled P-E-N-G-U-I-N. -E penguin. <laughs> and there's our penguin. Yeah, there's a great picture of our penguin right there. They sort of look alike. All right, I hope you had fun drawing our penguin. Let's go ahead and take a look at another animal. So, Olivia, where, where are you gonna bring us? What other animals can we look at today? There are so many cool animals to look at here at the aquarium kind of hard to choose. Let's see where she brings us today. Ooh, here we are in Shark Lagoon. Take a minute. What do you spy with your little eye? What kind of observations can you make about the animals in here? What do you see? Ooh. <laughs> Wow, that was a black tip reef shark. Yeah, there's triangles, right? We see sharks, we see triangles. Oh, there's our zebra shark. Long tails, yes, very good. We have a bunch of different colors, right? We have some black fins. We have some triangular shaped fins, a football shaped body, we have coral in here. Yes, these are all great observations. I spy fish. Yes. Excellent job. So there are lots of different animals. Ooh, I spy a zebra shark with some spots on it and a long tail. Wow. Everybody is really active this morning. Oh, is there a ray behind me? Oh, look, there's two. One of those is called a reticulate whiptail ray, and it is very, very, very large. Yeah, here it is, moving. Ooh, I spy lots of different shapes, circles and triangles, Ooh, <laughs> and eyes and mouths. Ooh, so these are pretty fast swimmers. I would say these sharks and these fish, they're moving pretty well. But let's take a look at one of the slower moving fish. Let's see if we can find, ah, here we are. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. We are taking a look at what can you spy in here? Uh-huh, so maybe you spy some sea grass. Maybe you spy some circles on the bottom here. Maybe you spy some other type of grass like seaweed. Ooh. Do you spy something with a long tail? Yes, something yellow with a long tail. Very good, that is a seahorse. And now look at these seahorses. How many seahorses can you spy here? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you spy eight seahorses? 
maybe nine actually in the back there. Wow. I spy a lot of seahorses. These are some of the coolest fish, at least in my opinion. I think they're so cool because of their unique shape. So if you look at their bodies, they're very long and thin. What shape can you notice about what they have in their body? Ooh, this is a great picture right here. Yeah. So they have a little curly tail here. This tail curls up. And the very specific scientific word for this is called prehensile. Big word! <laughs> this means that this tail can grab onto things, just like you can grab onto things with your hands, using your thumbs. These seahorses can grab onto things using their tails. And that's actually how they survive. They survive by grabbing onto plants, like seagrass, for example, and holding on there because they're not very fast swimmers. When you spy their fins, ooh, here's a great picture. Yes, this seahorse is grabbing on to what looks like a net here. So these seahorses, look at their fins. You can see here, this fin right here is really, really small compared to some of the shark fins that we saw earlier. This fin is not gonna make the seahorse swim very quickly. So they have to rely on their tails to hold them in place. And now what else do you notice? What else can you observe about this seahorse? Yeah, why are they yellow? They're yellow, why do you think they're yellow? Go ahead and text us in, what do you think? Hmm, why could they be yellow? Well, I think that they're yellow because that also helps them blend, ooh, great picture, blend in with their environment. That yellowy color kind of blends in with the yellowy greenish seagrass here. So not only are they holding on to that seagrass, and, but they're also blending in. So any predators that are around, hope their, their hope is that they're not seen. They are anchored in there and they're not seen, so predators are not going to get them because they don't really have too many defenses. If you look at their bodies, mostly they're banking on their tails and their camouflage to keep them safe. Ooh, I spy a long snout. Do you see a long snout on these seahorses? Now this is a Pacific seahorse here, and this snout, really, really long snout, is helpful for them feeding in the water. So since they're not moving a lot, ooh, yeah, this is great here. They're gonna be sucking in their food, almost like a straw. So they're eating tiny little crustaceans, tiny, tiny little animals in the water, and they suck in that water uh, using their long snout here. So yeah, you can see another good picture here of these seahorses clinging on to the seagrass, and you can imagine them sucking in that water and getting their food out of that water. Oh, here's a great video. Yeah. What are they doing? They're kind of funny when you look at them swimming. They do not swim like other fish because they have those really, really small fins that are not going to make them go very fast. In fact, like I said earlier, they're the slowest fish in the ocean. <laughs> So these seahorses are really, really fun to look at. And also, what else do you notice about their bodies? We looked at their tail when it was all curled up, but now that their tail is extended, oh wow, their tail almost takes up about half of their whole body size. Again, their tails are really important for them. So it takes up a large part of their body. A cool fun fact about seahorses is actually the dad plays a really big role um, in reproduction here. So the moms will have their eggs, they'll be fertilized, and the moms will give their fertilized eggs to dad, and dad's going to hold on to those eggs until they're ready to be dispersed into the water. So dad, this is pretty unique uh, in terms of fish reproduction here. And dads have a really big role. 
Shout out to all the dads out there. <laughs> Seahorses. They are so fun to watch. Just them sort of gliding through the water there. How many can you see here? Let's see, I can count one, two, three. Ooh, is there one hiding in the rocks? Four, oh, four, five. Yeah, they do camouflage really well. They're doing a great job. Yeah, I spy, I think five seahorses here. How many do you spy? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, maybe six. I think there's one oh, right there. One right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was seahorses. Let's take a look at another animal. So let's go to one of my favorite places here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Ooh, yes, this is Coastal Corner. And I'm just gonna step off screen. What do you observe here? What do you observe? What colors do you see? Do you see orange? Ooh, do you see a fish? <laughs> a very, very wiggly fish with some stripes there. Ooh, do you see uh, things moving back and forth in the current? Yeah, look at that. So I spy a sea anemone. I actually see three sea anemones. Oh, this sea anemone right here, it's really fun to watch. You can see its tentacles moving back and forth in the current. You can see its body shape is circular. It has a pretty big body shape. Oh, there's our tainted greenling fish right there saying hello. So these sea anemones have circular bodies. Ooh, great picture. Circular bodies with these tentacles here. All of these tentacles sort of around the circle here, the circle that's in the middle. So you see the circle that's in the middle? What do you think that that is? What do you think that that could be used for? <laughs> Someone said it looks like a belly button. It, it kind of does. I, I see that. That is actually the sea anemone's mouth. So that is where they're going to be eating their food. So if you notice here in this picture, really cool, around the tentacles here, we have different colors. We have almost like a reddish color. So these red lines are all sort of leading toward the mouth. We also have some white lines. It almost looks like a sun or something there. And they're all coming out from its mouth. Yeah, and what else? When you look at this picture of the sea anemone here, what do you think about the texture? So this sea anemone is actually really squishy. It's mostly made up of water. So when you touch it, another one of our senses, an observation you can make, is you'll find it's a little squishy and maybe a little sticky too. And now that stickiness that you might be feeling, that is going to be um, some stinging poison, some venom that the sea anemone has. So that is going to be something that it has to actually sting, stun, and get its prey. So an unsuspecting fish that may be swimming by might get stung by one of these tentacles and then it can no longer move, and then the anemone uses that opportunity to take that fish and bring it into its mouth and eat that fish. Ooh, hard to believe, but these animals actually have stinging cells. Now, they are really, really cool to look at. Remember, we see circles, we see almost like a triangle, some lines, more circles at the ends of the tentacles. Yeah, so these anemones are really cool. So yeah, let's take another look. Ooh, I see a bunch of different colors. So you can see, how many anemones do you see here? Let's count. 
do one, two, three, oh, four over here, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think there's another one right there. Eleven. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, and yes, there's a pink one at the top. I'm right there. Twelve. Wow, so there's twelve anemones right here. They actually do a pretty good job of blending in. Now, I think that helps them when they're trying to catch their prey. Fish may not see them. Now, these anemones, you can see that there's, they come in different colors. They have sort of the same shape. They may have slightly different tentacles, but they all have that rounded body, and then they have that base that's going to stick on to the rock or to whatever they have stuck themselves to because they don't really move around a lot. The only thing really doing the moving is their tentacles. You can see that they come in pink colors, some, yeah, some orange, some white, some yellow, green. Some of the tentacles actually have white tips on them, so they're multicolored. Wow, anemones are so cool. Ooh, yeah, I also spy some sea stars. I see a lot of sea stars in here. Let's count the sea stars. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five over here, six, seven, yeah, eight, nine, and yeah, I think there's 10 at the top because there's two up there. Ooh, 10. Wow, so there are a bunch of sea stars in here, and there's actually two different kinds. So if you look at their bodies, I spy a body that has really, really long arms, and it's big with little white dots on it. Yeah, five arms here, right? Imagine if you had five arms. Wow, <laughs> that would be amazing. Think of all the things you could do. So these sea stars have five arms. These are called ochre stars. So you, maybe you're thinking, are these stars just in one place all the time? Do they, do they go anywhere? Do they move? And the answer to that is yes, they do move. They have really cool tube feet on the bottoms of their bodies, and those are going to help them not only move, but also sense light and sense different chemicals in the water. So those tube feet are really, really important for them. So we have... I spy another type of sea star in here, actually. We have over here, this is a bat star. Now, I love these bat stars. Ooh, yes, it's a great picture. I love these bat stars because of their arms. They are almost like webbed, almost like the wings of a bat. So that's where they get their name because in between their arms, they have almost like a wing of a bat in here. And so... I spy here, there's many different colors, bright colors, we have white colors, we have pink, orange, red, wow, and then blue, and sort of a combination of all those colors. They are really, really brightly colorful stars. And now, these sea stars, most of them also have five arms, and these ones, as opposed to the ochre stars, these sea stars are going to be mostly breaking down old or dead animals and plants. So they're really important for their ecosystem because they are decomposers. So they break down and they release nutrients that are trapped up inside of the bodies of uh, dead plants and animals. So they are really, really important. They're the, the stars of their ecosystem, these bad stars. So, wow. We are almost out of time here, but just to recap, we have seen a bunch of different animals here. So we started with the Magellanic penguin. We saw the Pacific seahorse. We looked at the sea stars, the ochre stars and the bat stars and the sea anemones. Wow, we saw a lot of things using our powers of observation. We used our eyes and our ears to learn today. So good job, everybody. 
you did a great job. And again, if you are watching this after our live broadcast, you can go ahead and email a question to live at lbaop.org. We will do our best to get back to you. Um, and you can also tune in on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific and see more episodes of Aquarium Online Academy. But that is all for today. Thank you for joining and learning with us today. I had so much fun, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.